Hello everyone, <coughs> you're welcome to another tutorial in data analysis brought to you by Excretion. Today we'll be looking at reliability and validity, the test for reliability and validity. Reproduce under the same condition. Why validity refers to the accuracy of a measure, whether the results really represent what they are supposed to measure. So, we have a data set in front of us gotten from a pilot study on students' social habits to COVID-19. We have a set of questions on social distancing, we have questions on mask wearing, we have questions on hand washing, and we have questions on the vaccination. And of course, it's a Likert -like scale, and we have coded one for strongly disagree right up to four for strongly agree. So to test for reliability, of course our sample size is 100, as you can see, our sample size is 100, and uh, to test for reliability of our questionnaire, we come to analyze, come to scale, reliability analysis, let me just reset this, and then we send everything to the item, come to statistic, and we check item, and we check scale if item deleted then we click continue and click on ok so here we have our results and the first thing we are going to look at will be the Cronbach's alpha in this case we have 0 0.681 that is ok if you have a value of 0 0.6 it's ok if your value is 0 0.8 it's good if it's 0 0.9 all oh, it's very good so the closer your Cronbach's alpha level is to 1 the more reliable your questionnaire is yeah so our questionnaire is reliable we have 0.681 now uh, let us see if the value will increase in case we delete a particular question in our questionnaire if you delete some questions in your questionnaire will it give you more reliability so we come right down to the table on item total statistics and we look at the cross back alpha if item is deleted so if you delete the first question which says social distance reduces the spread of COVID-19. If you delete this question from your questionnaire, your Cronbach's alpha level will be 0.678. It is even less than, than 0.681 for the overall. So if you delete this question, it will not really help. It will not make your questionnaire better. So you just look through to see if you delete a particular question, it will make your questionnaire more reliable. And we see that there is no value that is even above 0.6. So we don't need to delete any question from our questionnaire. So our questionnaire is reliable. If your value is 0.6, it's okay. If your value is 0.8, that is 0.6 to 0.7 to 0.8 is good. If it's 0.9, it's very good. If it's 1, it's perfect. So that is it for reliability. Let's move over to validity. We come back to the data view. And uh, of course, we see that we have 20 questions. So the first thing to do for your validity is that you need to take the sum that is for each case you need to get the total sum for all the questions that you have in your questionnaire so to do this uh, you can come to transform compute variable uh, let me reset this so the target variable that we want to compute is um, total and then we come here we come to the function group we click on all we come right down here to sum sum we take the sum use this arrow and take it right up and then it says we have to send all our questions to this uh, to fit in these braces separated by a comma so you take the first one you send it take a comma take the second one and send it so I'll just pause the video and I'll send all the 20 questions to these braces separated by commas and then we will continue okay I've sent all the questions inside the braces so we just have to take okay Okay, there's something, there's an illegal character somewhere. Yeah, and I got it. I do not put a comma in between uh, this one, HW1 and HW2. So you always have to check this, and then HW3 and HW4. There wasn't a comma as well. So that's good. I think it should go now. Good. So if we go back to our variable view, we come right down, right to the, to, to the, to the end. We will see that a new variable has been added called total, and this is the total 
uh, score for each person for each person in our pilot study so we can come to variable view and of course just reduce this to zero to have a uh, good data types and uh, mm, that's it so the next thing we have to do is to go ahead with our test of validity where we will use the PSM correlation we just come to analyze come to correlate we use bivariate then we send everything control a and send everything to variables and then we make sure that PSM is checked and uh, 28 of course is 28 and flag significant correlations is also checked so you click on ok so we have this table for correlations we just scroll right to the end where we have the total and then we check our p-value p-value of course if you come back you see p-value is the second the second uh, row the second row and of course our sample size is 100 that's why we have 400 here for n so we have to check the second row for each question to see if there is significance that's the first thing and of course the first one is 0 0.01717 which is less than 0 0.05 alpha level that's significant the second one is of course less than 0 0.001 which is significant the third is 0 0.018 significant you just look through and we see that all our questions are having significant p-value that is good so the next thing is to check the flag you know we have to check if uh, that the, the software should flag the variables that are significant or the questions that are significant so if you see one asterisk it means that it is significant at the 0.05 alpha level if you see two it is significant at the 0.01 alpha level so this is that and um, we see that most of our measures are actually um, significant so our measures here almost all our measures here are, are valid which means the results will be accurate they actually measure what they are supposed to measure but then you want to compare of course these you observe Pearson value with the critical value of course this is the Pearson correlation value the first row so you want to observe you have to compare this with your critical value to be sure that this value that has been flagged actually is greater than the critical value so I will give I'll put a link to the script on the description section of this video for the data set that we have used in this case so that you can you can, uh, okay, you can follow through you can, you can practice while you follow the video and I'll also put the link for the Pearson table the Pearson critical values table for you to download if you don't have it so we see that for the Pearson correlation coefficient table we have 0.25 level, 0.1 level, 0.05 level, 0.025 level, 0.1, 0.01 level, 0.005 level so our level here is 0.05 so it's the third column and our degrees of freedom in uh, for two date will be 98 because it's n minus 2 in this case so if we go right to 98 right to 98 we will see that we have 0 0.1654 0 0.1654 so this value is less than our own value this critical value is less than our value of course our value is 0 0.238 yeah which is greater than that critical value so if your value is greater than the critical value it means that your measure is valid so that is how you check for validity of your your measures the questions in your questionnaire i hope this was helpful to you thank you for having followed through remember to hit the like button and see you in the next tutorial